Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. Um, this is Ajar again. Uh, welcome back to uh, this Live Noding. Uh, while the Blender Sushi guy is having his uh, small break, I will be your teacher for today. Um, instead of talking about notes, I will be just probably just doing like a rundown of uh, Blender. There is a lot of uh, misconceptions of Blender out there. Uh, some people think Blender is just a toy. Blender is not a toy. Blender is a nice open source uh, tool provided by the Blender Foundations, as you can see here in the logo. Oh, you can't see my face now. Um, but yeah, I'm using currently, I'm inside Blender 2.79 and Blender 2.8 is still being developed. 2.8 is going to be like a, like a big Blender upgrade. But for now, I uh, live inside Blender 2.79 and as you can see around me there's a lot of objects and you can actually see my bone as well uh, yeah but anyhow I'll, i might actually turn off the visibility of this light and there's this light spotlight and uh, there's this uh, this point light maybe i should hide this one i'm gonna turn uh, i'm gonna switch to outliner real quick so I just drag one of this triangle on the corner, switch to outliner and try to find the point light. I just hide the visibility. Okay, now it's a bit cleaner. Uh, you can still see my bone there. Maybe I hide it as well. I kind of like, oh, actually that's the, the white things on my eyes. It's actually the bone. It's actually looking pretty nice. Well, anyway, uh, now, uh, Let's pretend that I know nothing about Blender. And if you just use Blender for the first time, you're gonna get this uh, default um, interface. And I'm gonna, quick, uh, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. Um, this is the one you are seeing, in the, it's the user perspective. I, if I point out, if I look at the, uh, there's uh, on the top corner there, it says user perspective, that's the, kind of like the default view, 3D view, this, uh, the whole thing right here, actually including uh, this frame over here, I, like I drag it around with the mouse. On the left, you can see this uh, panel, uh, what is it called, the tool panel, tool shelf. It, uh, it's a tool shelf with a hotkey T, so you can hide it using T, if you just tap T and if I tap N uh, very quick, you get this uh, property panel. But for now, we can we can actually hide this guy. Tap N and then this one tap T to get the list tool panel. Um, yeah, the tool panel contains the usual 3D stuff. Um, okay, one thing uh, you might notice if you use Blender for the first time. Left click actually doesn't allow you to select an object. Selecting an object, like if I want to select my head, I just right click on it. So now it's a green, selected in green color. And that's actually uh, my head being selected. Left click is actually this weird 3D cursor, like a target. Um, you might wonder why, why, why Blender is like, why left click is not selecting because um, left click is actually like, uh, you can select objects and like a uh, paint select and things like that. But, you know, uh, that's when you are in edit mode because the way Blender design is that this 3D cursor will soon become very, very useful. Um, it took me around two months when I first used Blender to get used of this uh, left click being the 3D cursor. Um, let's say I want to create like a 3D mesh. Um, I'm gonna switch to this uh, tool panel and then create, there is a add primitive uh, on this uh, panel uh, the 3d cursor is going to be the placement for these objects let's say i just put it here so it's kind of there's a 3d cursor in the in the in the 3d space i click on the on the cube and you're going to have a cube now the cube is now being lit by the light i can turn off the light and just get like a solid so now i'm i don't have any texture maybe it's better if i have a texture uh, material I uh, know I just switch to solid for now so you can see wherever I put 
this 3D cursor is going to be the placement for the 3D objects in the scene. Whether I'm using uh, to create like a cylinder, things like that, and I can adjust the cylinder on this panel. This is like a once-off thing. Uh, so you can do that in Blender and say I want to uh, make myself like a like a quick frame is my this monkey head right here now I can have the monkey head and I can actually use a hotkey S to scale air R, R actually to rotate uh, tap R twice and you, you can have local rotations you can scale it and things like that you can move it using G G is the hotkey to grab grab and select object and move it somewhere else so but you, you can see the 3d cursor is very helpful for that um, well now I can select the object using right click and then delete them using X X for delete sometimes oops I just switched to the wrong <laughs> I pressed the wrong hotkey Z is actually like a render sometimes wireframes and sometimes for render I always forget about that but it's okay you get you get used to it Sometimes it's, if I really forget like a uh, hotkey, I will just like uh, tap um, spacebar, tap spacebar and type whatever I want. Like uh, if I want to smooth the monkey, I just tap smooth and then I smooth the monkey. The monkey head is very low res by default. It's, it's only have like a, a couple of triangles, 30,000. It's very, very small. But yeah, the monkey head, you can, you can actually, like this guy right here, um, you can smooth it control control one control two control three and you have like really much smoother monkey head that's because uh once you have uh tap on the control one two three that's actually activate the modifier right here subdivide uh, subsurface modifier in blender you can have this kind of cool modifier stack and with modifier you can turn on and off anything you know you can turn on the preview or turn it off if you don't want it, you just uh, click on it and you have like uh, the objects back to the original. So that's the monkey head. You can duplicate it using Shift D. There's a lot of hotkey in Blender, but don't worry about it. You get used to it uh, very, very quickly. So now I'll switch back to the texture mode. Um, the lighting is uh, working pretty well. Let me try selecting one of them and then try to move it around oh, because I cannot see it. So that's uh, the lightning for at the moment. That's the red and the blue light, and there's this uh, spotlight, of course. I think I'm gonna make the spotlight a little bit to the back. Actually, no. I want it to be. I want to be in the spotlight. The the two monkey can go up, go out somewhere else. So yeah, if I if I want I I can go further with a uh, with a blender some uh, blender basics like. Um, Sorry if my eyes is not looking at you. It's because of my camera is a bit low. I'm gonna move a bit lower so my eyes is now higher. Now I'm looking to the camera properly. I'm looking at the monitor. Normally I look this way. You, you might know why. But anyhow, I continue on. Um, so in the 3D view, using your mouse three button, you need to use three button mouse. Otherwise, I will slap your hand. Yeah, if you are working in 3D, you need to have at least three button mouse. So keep that in mind. Even if you are working in Mac and using the magic button or whatever, have another mouse or have like a stylus. Uh, anyway, that's a tip. Mm, so three button mouse. Uh, if you are in a 3D view and you want to orbit and you want to uh, like look around it, going around the objects, you can use a the middle mouse button. The middle mouse button, you, normally you use it for scrolling, but you can actually click on it and you can orbit around the 3D objects. And you can zoom in and out, zoom out using the, the scroll, of course. Um, the left click, of course, left click is not selecting objects, but if, if, you, if you are inside something, let's say I'm inside um, myself, if I hit tab, now I'm inside myself and I'm actually working on this guy right here bit weird I can actually select select the points now my screen doesn't work anymore I just go out okay back to normal so you can select an object like uh, I'll, I'll use the monkey actually select the monkey tap hit 
tab for edit. Now I'm editing the monkey over here. Uh, I'm gonna look at the monkey using my eyes and then you can actually make modification like that. Not gonna do it for now, it's for you to, uh, to try it yourself. So right click is to select, G is to grab. And if you're in 3D, uh, 3D view, once again, middle click, you orbit around, scroll to zoom in, zoom out. You can actually do the panning. Um, there's a hotkey for that. Sometimes I forgot control space. Oops, no, this is like max zoom thing. Control option. Control options and scrolling will give you this ability to orbit like a turntable. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, Blender is really, really cool uh, tool. It's open source completely. It's free when people ask always like, why is it free? Why is it there? Is there, is there a catch or somewhere? No, there is no catch. Blender works uh, by donations and you can actually support Blender uh, using the Blender Cloud. Uh, I'm really like looking forward for Blender 2.8 myself with a real time rendering EV render. Currently, we actually have a cycle render already. This is actually pretty realistic and you can do like a real time rendering as well. I can try to render myself in real time. You know, this is just a preview. If I go to render right here, I'm actually rendering, but it uh, doesn't seem to be working while I'm recording. Well, doesn't matter. But yeah, that's a quick rundown of Blender. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this. Um, there's a lot that I haven't covered, you know, but just try and look through all these tools. You can look at all these buttons and uh, learn the shortcuts like for translate, rotate, scale. That's for the object. And you can, you know, try, look at the history. There's a lot in Blender that uh, you will discover. Um, there are, of course, like, there are, 3D package out there, really cool, like Maya, Houdini, Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, you know, um, lots of cool tools out there, but they're mostly, um, you have to pay for a license, um, and sometimes if you need to work in the industry, you need to use uh, those softwares, and if you are like a, you are in the game industry, you will use Unity and Unreal as well. A license is important, of course, uh, sometimes, but I think like for 3D, 3D software package these days shouldn't cost like thousands of dollars. Uh, and if I'm using Blender, sometimes I just go to any computer and download Blender and I can use it right away. Blender is really powerful that way. Some people ca can call it as a toy. It's a nice toy, a very nice toy, I think. But anyhow, I, I think Blender is really, really uh, priceless and yeah. You can ask me anything. I, I'm not like an expert. You can look at tutorials like for from Blender Guru for something on something like a creative stream out there. There's a lot of uh, really nice Blender tutorial. Um, normally, I if you've been following Blender Sushi for a while, you, you might notice that I use notes a lot. And with notes, you, you can uh, do a lot of things that are kind of unusual. This is not uh, like a common uh, workflow, but I, I'm going to show it to you anyway. So I'm going to switch back to my texture mode. And I'm using Scratch Off add-on. Sometimes I do use Animation Notes add-on. You know, all this talking head in real time actually works because of Animation Notes running in the background. You can see really quick. This is why I am actually working. This is how I'm working because Animation Notes is running really hard in the background. But anyhow, I use uh, Scratch Off add-on as well. So with Scratch Off, we can easily generate objects. Um, whoops, I just press it. So that's, uh, that's unfortunate effects. Um, but anyhow, that's pretty much it for this live loading. Hopefully you enjoy it. And I'll see you next time with the tutorial. Next time, I promise you, I will not crash. Um, Thanks again for uh, PL to provide um, this really cool AJAR 3D head model. Um, actually, I'm kind of want this to work again. So I'm now I'm back and live again. I want this to work. I want to show you some cool thing you can do using Scratch Off add-on uh, while having this uh, 3D head live. Um, so let's try. It shouldn't crash this often. Sometimes it does. Doesn't matter. Uh, 
let's create a viewer B mesh and this is a box object and I'm generating it on the fly in real time there you go that's a 3d box it's very very easy and simple once you get used to it I like using nodes uh, nodes is really cool like this cube over here I can for example make it like a lot of these cubes for example um, using random vector random vector will generate like a, a lot of box if I want it something like that so you can see boxes now a lot of boxes there you go a lot of boxes very very easily but not not just boxes you can do a lot you can use uh, things like line for example and to generate objects uh, like that like an array of objects like like this you can control the stepping and instead of box you can of course have uh, other objects like even like a Susan head I can create a Susan monkey head like this so now you can see the monkey head and I can resize it just use the scaling here so this is the transformation matrix and if I ever if I actually want to move all of this I can use the move vector so yeah yeah normally I like using nodes uh, because of my background I don't know I think I learned blender in the in the in my own ways I, my background was using Maya 3d Houdini and stuff but this day I'm using blender and blender with square chalk and animation nodes is kind of like a growing um, very very powerful and hopefully in the future we're gonna see more cool things you can do using blender and nodes add-on like square chalk or animation nodes or even in the near future maybe we can see like a blender particle node system yeah let's see let's see how it goes um so yeah there you go i am ajar once again i'm uh, provided by property lounge thanks again to uh, lend me this uh ajar 3d head thanks again for tuning in for blender sushi in 2017 it's nearly 2018 uh, so hopefully you enjoy your New Year's Eve. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.